What's up guys, it's Cody here. And today in this video, we're gonna be talking about something incredibly exciting. And that is the exploits, the jailbreak exploits for iOS 11.3.1. Now I don't have to tell you right now, but I'm going to. And that is if you wanna jailbreak your device and you're not jailbroken right now, get on 11.3.1 today. Like literally right now. And I'm gonna show you guys how to get onto 11.3.1 in this video if you're on a lower firmware. If you're on iOS 12, I've already done a video showing you guys how to downgrade to 11.3.1. I'll put a link in the description below. Check it out, downgrade if you wanna jailbreak your device and do it literally as soon as you can because the window for 11.3.1 could be closing incredibly soon. That's probably the last time I'm gonna talk about it. So if you wanna jailbreak, get on 11.3.1 right now. Okay, I'll shut up. So now let's talk about the two vulnerabilities that Ian Beer released yesterday. So in this video, I'm not gonna get incredibly technical because I don't think the layman user, the people that are actually wanting to jailbreak their device are terribly interested in the technicalities and how these bugs or these exploits work or what is required of them. What I'm gonna do in this video is give you a general knowledge of what you guys probably want to know and yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Final decision. If you guys really like the technicalities, let me know in the comments below and maybe I'll get more into that in future updates. But for today, let's talk about the VFS bug. The VFS bug is what it is. It's a bug. It's not an actual exploit. It's actually going to require an exploit to be written for it. And this is not a terribly easy thing to do with this particular bug. So that one's actually been kind of put on the back burner for now. So the more exciting exploit is the MPTCP exploit. Now, the downside of this is that it requires a developer's account. So there's rumors going around that I'm pretty sure started on Reddit because that's what I saw yesterday, is that you only need a developer account if you're going to compile it. And that is not true. According to Coolstar, you need a developer's account to compile it and you need it to jailbreak your device. So yeah, a lot of people don't have developer's accounts. So that sucks because they're expensive, they're like 100 bucks a year. And right now, this is the exploit that Coolstar is working on. So he got his hands on a developer's account and he started working on the MPTCP exploit. The work has already started and there's progress already being made on this particular exploit. So right now, it seems like what the game plan is, is Coolstar is gonna be working on this MPTCP exploit using his developer's account and get a fully working jailbreak for that. Now. Is there going to be a public release of this jailbreak that requires a developer's account? I can't say. I don't know. Nobody really knows yet. So we're probably going to find that out later on down the road. Now, the thing is, is if they do release it, you're going to need a developer's account in order to use it. Now, there's possibly some ways around that, you know, where everybody doesn't have to buy a developer's account, right? Possibly share them. But again, I don't even know if this is going to be publicly released. But what it is going to do is get us a whole lot closer to a public jailbreak release. Don't go buy developer accounts in anticipation of this jailbreak. The best thing to do is just kind of sit back, relax, wait a little bit longer, just as you always do. Just try to take a couple deep breaths and just know that people are working on it right now. Now, the last update from Coolstar's progress is that he said that he uh, just got the TFP0 successfully after running Ian Beer's multipath on his iPad Pro. So there's progress there, and we also have another developer, Jake James, who was able to get root access on 11.3.1 using the same exploit. Now, that basically just means that they have full read-write capabilities on the device. But in a nutshell, there's a lot to do, but we're on our way to a fully jailbreakable 11.3.1. So that's basically all the information that I have uh, for 11.3.1. What I wanna do here is show you guys how to upgrade to 11.3.1 really quick, just so you have all the information that you need. And if you miss the signing window, you got no excuses. No excuses. I would definitely recommend following me on Twitter if you wanna stay up to date with the jailbreak news and everything. I'll be sure to put a link in the description below for you guys. But let's switch over to my desk and I'm gonna show you how to upgrade your device from a lower firmware to 11.3.1. Again, if you're on iOS 12, if you're on iOS 12 beta one, then I would definitely recommend downgrading and I have a link on how to do that in the description as well. So let's go over here. All right, so the first thing that you wanna do is download the firmware for 11.3.1 
for your device. So I'll put a link in the description below for this website. It's just IPSW.me. You can click on that and then select your device. So I have an iPhone 7 right here. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And I have the GSM version. So iPhone 7 GSM. And then you can see 11.3.1 right here. So I'll go ahead and click download for that. And it shouldn't take too long. You can see right here, it's gonna take you know two minutes or so, but it is about almost three gigs, 2.7 gigs. So if you got a slower internet connection, it is gonna take a little bit longer. But I definitely would recommend backing up your device before you do this. But once you're backed up and you have the IPSW, you should be good to go. All right, so we just finished downloading. And now what we wanna do is just open up iTunes. So I have iTunes open right here. I'm just gonna set it up as a new iPhone. All right, so now what we wanna do here is if you're on a Mac, you're gonna hold the Option button and click Update. If you're on a Windows computer, then you can just hold the Shift button and click Update as well. So just make sure you're selecting the correct IPSW. So this is the 11.3.1. So this is the one we wanna open up. So I'll just double click it. And then you can see iTunes will update your phone to iOS 11.3.1 and verify the update with Apple. So we'll just go ahead and click Update. And it should go ahead and start the process of extracting the software and then updating your device to 11.3.1. Again, if you're on iOS 12, it's a pretty similar process, but if you wanna check out the video on how to do that, I'll have a link in the description below. So you can see here, it says enter the passcode for Cody's iPhone. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and speed things up so it doesn't take forever. But this process usually only takes, you know, 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, depending on how much uh, data and everything you have on your device. So if you have more stuff, then it's usually gonna take a little bit longer. This was a, you know, an empty phone for the most part. So it only took about 10 minutes or so. So we'll just wait for it to get done. And I'll show you that I've upgraded successfully to 11.3.1. .1. And that should be it. So now if we go into our settings and we go to general about you can see we're on 11.3.1 .1 and we are locked and loaded to get jailbroken once that jailbreak is released all right guys that's all i got for this video i hope you guys enjoyed it and if you did make sure you hit that like button of course if you guys want to stay up to date with everything apple jailbreak or tech related that i post make sure you hit that subscribe button and i'll see you guys in the next video